Hello guys, I just wanted to show you a quick video about the suspension rebuild I did recently in my first gen of Audi TT. There are some things that you have to keep in mind, so I hope you will find it helpful. I must say that overall condition of the suspension was quite fine, especially for a car that is over 20 years old, but I found some rust spots on the chases that I wanted to get rid of, so after a few days of struggling I've been able to refurbish it very well, and now all that is left is to install new parts. So we have to start with the most boring parts, which are the handbrake cables. They go straight into the chassis through the guide tubes and rubber seals. Unfortunately, the guides were very hard to find in my country. I even tried to swap them with the Golf 4 parts, but they are not the same, so I had to sand and paint the old ones. Once our cables are installed, we can go straight to the fuel tank. I will start from installing the fuel hoses along with the pump as it is much easier at this point. You would also want to drain it completely before picking it up as the remaining fuel makes it very heavy. Due to its shape, it is not easy to support it with a jack stand. Happily, I had enough time to grab the metal brackets and install them in. There are also two additional holes, but they are known to crack really easily, so you want to take care of them at the very end. And I wouldn't be myself if I didn't forget something. There is one bracket left that you install under the fuel cap. Fortunately, it can be installed by pulling the assembly a little bit. Now all left is to take some N10 nuts and bolts and screw them along with the ground cable. I will apply a little bit of grease so it does not corrode that quick. And last but not least, the brake cable clamps that I've been waiting to deliver for too long. And cut! You might be wondering why I have done rebuild only at the back of the car and the answer is, I'm lazy. Just kidding, at this point I was just not able to do it properly, so it will be finished later on. Ok, let's go back to the work. As all of the suspension parts are new, I also had to install new poly bushes. The brand I chose might be unknown to you, as I believe they are made in Poland, but they are basically the same as Powerflex. To be honest, I was a little bit scared when it came to install them, because I don't have any specialized tools or even vice, but it came out very easy just using my hands. Sometimes I only had to help myself with a rubber hammer. This procedure is very easy and applies to all of the bushings used there, so I won't bore you anymore with it. As now I have great access to the Haltex system, I will install the power truck insert so it can perform a little bit nicer. I've also cleaned it up and checked for possible leaks, but it was all fine, so we can go and install it straight on the car. As I've been doing it by myself, I will bolt in the frame and then try to pull the Haltex in it. The reason is I was simply afraid that it would be too heavy for me to lift it at the same time. If you've got a torque wrench, it is a great time to use it, because you would be surprised how little torque is needed to properly bolt them in. Ok, so there comes the most challenging part. I knew that something will go wrong, but I didn't expect that. It seems like I accidentally purchased different bolts than I need. They've got the same dimensions as original ones, but they do not fit properly. I'm not sure if that's due to the poly bushes I used, or I just fucked up. Fortunately, I've been able to mount them, I just had to unscrew the halodex one more time. And the last thing is to mount this Haldex bracket, which is super easy unless you lost one of the bolts. As you can see, I'm a professional, so let's keep the show going. In the next step, I will prepare the wishbones starting by stop buffers that goes under the rear spring. If your car is early 2000, you will most likely have the old style wishbones, which uses thread to mount them, so once you buy a new buffers, you will have to drill additional holes so they can fit properly. Following by that, I'm installing the brake line holders, and just after that we can take our brackets and try to put them on our new poly bushes. And just after one unsuccessful suicide, I can finally bolt the wishbones in. 
As I've sent the wishbones to be sanded with the old bearing housings installed, I will not have to remove them. If you've got some old housings, they will become very helpful there. In my case, I was really skeptical about it though, so I purchased the dedicated removal toolkit. I must say that I really don't like to buy tools that I will just use once and throw them out somewhere in the garage, but in this case I'm sure I would not be able to do it without them. As you can see, they've been so stuck I even had to extend my wrench by using one of the control arms. After pulling them out, I pay extra care to clean the mounting hole completely so new bearing will probably outlive the car. And now let's just install a new bearing in a reverse order. This step is very easy, but it requires a lot of force to fully press them in. I was really scared that I will damage it somehow because it cannot be seen in the video, but I really use a lot of force. Now I know there is no other way to do it and it is totally safe for bearings and for the hub as well. Once our hubs are installed, I'll take care of the ABS sensors as it is much easier to mount them before the drive axle shafts goes in. And after doing the same for the other side, you can already tell we've made a huge progress. Now let's take care of the drive shafts. I've been lucky enough to find a used one that looks as good as new, so after installing new seals and cleaning them a little bit, they were good to go. I filled up about 70 grams of grit to each of the axles and secured them with the bolts. As brakes are not installed yet, I will screw them completely at the very end. As the video is already boring, I've skipped the control arms and went straight to mounting the anti-roll bar with two brackets. In my case they're a little bit different as the bar is thicker by a few millimeters. It is supposed to help with the handling. Well, we will see that. And finally, there comes a new suspension setup. I personally choose Birstein B14 as I don't want to overpay for the KW V3. In my case, there was no purpose for the regulated sway bars, so I just installed original ones at the front as well. And unfortunately, I have to use the old heat shield. I've tried to make it a little bit nice looking, but I failed in every way, so it will be as it is. It already gave me a cancer, so fuck it. I was very glad that all I had to do in terms of the exhaust system was to remove the cat back and install it back, as to be honest it's not my favorite kind of job. And it is the same about the brakes if you ask me. Fortunately in my case they were replaced for brand new recently so it went flawlessly. Calipers takes only two bolts to mold them in so that's very easy as well. But please, don't underestimate this part of job and pay extra attention to all of the brake lines so they can be installed properly and don't look for savings there, as this is the only things that keeps you safe. Please refer to video description if you need some more details about the assembly. And with the brakes installed, we can now take our wheels and lower the car in order to take care of all of the remaining bolts and nuts, as they should always be tightened up while car is in its natural position. This is also the part in which you want to tighten up everything with the final torque. As I've skipped it during the recording day, I also need to install a fuel filter, wheel arches and tidy up the front suspension a little bit. After that, I will drain the brake lines and we can finally give this puppy a test ride. I must say that I'm very happy with the final result. It is definitely not one of the JDM colorful suspension renovation, but it looks good enough for me and it will probably last for another 20 years. Handling capabilities has surprised me even more, so I can truly say that I enjoy this car more than ever before. Thanks for your attention.